that teenagers and cell phones go hand in hand. Let's face it, we all go hand in hand with our phones these days. My next guest, though, is not a typical 16-year-old. She turned her text messages from friends into inspiration for a life-changing invention. So here's the story. It all started when Tiffany Gay saw family members struggling with their vision while doing everyday tasks. So she decided to do something about it. And now Tiffany's determination will not only help her family, but potentially millions of people around the world. Take a look. I like to call my family a little bit of a nerd house because we don't watch sports, but we'll watch documentaries together as a family. My dad is an electrical engineer. I've learned so much through him and he's really helped me foster that love for engineering and science. I've been doing science fair since sixth grade. And along that entire period, I've accumulated a lot of accolades, which I'm extremely grateful for. The most recent project I'm working on is a LiDAR navigation system that helps those who are visually impaired. And what this device does is it uses LiDAR sensors along the brim of a visually impaired user's head to indicate that there's an obstacle within their path. And I was really drawn to this research after witnessing struggles from my family friend who had a visual impairment. I hope to see this research being out there on an extremely large scale. I want it to be accessible to everyone who's visually impaired despite their economic status. I'm really connected with the world of science and technology because of the power that it has to change our future. Even as a student, even other students out there, we have the power to make that change. If we start from a young age, I believe we can achieve so much. Wow. Stand <laughs> fam, please welcome Tiffany Gay to the show. Wow. I mean, we just, um, we just had a Marie on in her book, a love letter to tell kids you can do great things. And that is, you're a living example of this. So your family friend, Paulina, and your great aunt, Gertrude. 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 Yeah. Gertrude. Everybody needs a Gertrude in their life. Like, <laughs> so you saw that they were both visually impaired and, and struggling. Mm -hmm. And they became the inspiration for you to jump into action. Yes. Um, you said earlier you and your dad tinker around the house. You you made robots with your dad at a very, you, you've been like a <laughs> yes. science kid. Yes, yes. You made a love robot with your dad called yes. Felix or something? Fritz, Fritz. Fritz. Yes. So this is Fritz. Uh -huh. He's a robot. So in first grade, if you guys are familiar, whenever kids hand out like Valentine's Day yeah. gifts. So I created this robot with my dad. It uses a bunch of motors and servos. And so if someone's approaching that obstacle, it'll say happy Valentine's Day and then they'll drop their... Uh -huh. They'll drop their Valentine's Day box, which freaked a few first grade kids out. Uh, but you, and how old were you made, Fritz? I was in first grade, so first six, grade. Six. <laughs> and and he, you put the cart to him? Yes, yeah, so I brought this yeah. to my first grade classroom. Oh, boy. And um, if a first grade kid, like my friends, would come and give me a, yeah. a, a Valentine's Day card, yeah. then it would just say, announce happy Valentine's Day. Oh, so he would speak to your friends and they'd run off? Yes. No. <laughs> So that was one of your first big inventions. That was one of my first. So things. now you have two people that you care about in your life and you see their day-to-day -day struggle mm -hmm. and you jump into action to create this. So I have read the notes on what you created probably 700 times. <laughs> I still, my brain is not capable of understanding how smart you are. Okay, so tell me again how it works. Tell the whole audience. Okay, so this here is the final device that I developed. These are prototypes. These are, these are previous prototypes. Mm -hmm. This is a two year research project. Wow. So this is for my first year. Okay. And this is my second year. This is what I'm working on right okay. now. And what it has are, they're called LIDAR sensors. And it basically sends out a, a light that's not within our visual spectrum. It'll hit an obstacle. Okay. And the amount of time it takes for that to come back is called time of flight. And it determines distance oh. from obstacles all around the environment. So it would tell me, so rather than having to use a cane, for example, exactly. it would tell me when there was something in my area that I need to be aware of. Exactly. Okay. So in simple terms, what this LiDAR is doing is electronically understanding an environment. So the text, so this was inspired, you're on the phone with your friends, you're text messaging, and the phone vibrates. Right? Yes. So once I get this information collected from the LiDAR electronically, I needed to figure out how it was going to get relayed okay. to someone who's visually impaired. Okay. And I thought back to iPhone messages and, and calls and texts and how you feel that vibration and you understand that someone's calling you. So I used a vibration along the head of this device or this user who would be wearing so it. So it vibrates. So yeah. if so, I can touch it now. Oh, it vibrates. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, oh, it vibrates again. So if you're walking, do you want to hold it? You can't wear this. You can't wear oh, yeah, yeah. I can't wear these because these are very, prototypes. very delicate prototypes. I mean, this is 
high technology here. And <laughs> it's in the process, because it is a medical device, it's in the process of being tested and reviewed. Yes. And you're also competing yes. in, in science competitions. Yes. Not like the science fair I did, where you, <laughs> you put baking soda and the volcano erupts, <laughs> nothing like that. OK, this is the real deal. So this is vibrating right now. So say Paulina or your great aunt Gertrude or anyone else would be walking. And this would pres presumably be concealed in like a hat or a visor, right? Yes, yes. And they would feel like the camera. Yes. They would, they would feel, feel the their person. They would feel the region that region. That, that object is detected. So, so if they're detecting it, this, it will vibrate here. From the, so it's very specific to direction. Very specific. So right in front of you, to the side of you. To the, and as you get closer, wow. it will vibrate more intensely to indicate to, you're approaching an obstacle. Yes. How many years? You said two? Two years, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, Tiffany, this is a long way from Fritz the kissing bandit thing today at school. <laughs> so what's your dream for this? My dream for this is for it to be accessible globally. And I want it to be very inexpensive so anyone who's visually impaired can access it. And as I said, the research is continuing. So like, do you, do you know what's the goal timeline to have this available? So medical assistive devices take a lot of time to get patented and get out there because they, of course, want devices that are going to be safe, right? Um, but hopefully in the next five to 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Listen, that's yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> this is amazing. Thank Congratulations. You. I know you have you have a competition in another week from now, right? Yeah, well, that's my state science fair, so it'll be in Florida. OK, you got a state science fair coming up in Florida. Where in Florida? It's Lakeland. But I just yeah. came back from Tunisia in Africa, where I presented my research. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you are the embodiment of doing great things. Good luck at the next competition, Orlando. Listen, good luck to all the people competing in Orlando, but <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, and congrats to your parents. They raised an awesome kid.